Hi everyone, I'm Anu Katharisen, fertility physician and Dr. Mom, and here to educate on fertility. In this video, we'll be talking about egg freezing specifically. I often get asked in clinic, how many eggs should I freeze or how many cycles should I consider undergoing when thinking about moving forward with the process of egg freezing? So let's talk about that today. <music> to understand how many eggs to freeze or how many cycles to consider, it really is dependent on the woman and her individual circumstance. In addition, it's a very complex thing to understand and there are many aspects of treatment that are important to understand when you're trying to make these decisions. So the first thing that's important to understand is it's highly dependent on the woman's age and her baseline ovarian reserve. The ovarian reserve parameters, the antral follicle count, the AMH, these things tell us about egg number. So particularly the antral follicle count. So with that number, we get a baseline idea of our starting point for an egg freezing cycle. The next aspect that's important to understand is how an IVF cycle works. And not only that, but also understanding what are realistic expectations to anticipate in terms of the number of eggs retrieved at the end of one cycle. And similarly, what are realistic expectations to anticipate in terms of number of mature eggs after the end of one IVF cycle. The next thing that's important to understand is how does that number of mature eggs correlate to live birth rates? And that is going to be very dependent on the woman's age. The last component that's important to understand is how many kids is that patient hoping to have from this process. So if a patient wants one child out of this versus two children out of this process, that's gonna dramatically change the goal number of eggs that we would recommend trying to obtain from the process. So now let's go into each step of this in a little bit more detail. After meeting with your fertility specialist, the next thing is going to be getting a baseline assessment of ovarian reserve. And this is primarily done in two ways. One is a blood test called an AMH, which stands for anti-mullerian hormone. And the other is a antral follicle count, which is assessed with a transvaginal ultrasound. So AMH, again, it's a blood test standing for anti-mullerian hormone. It's a hormone produced by the cells that line the follicle. The antral follicle count is a assessment on ultrasound of the fluid-filled sacs in the ovaries. Each fluid-filled sac theoretically contains a microscopic egg. These numbers tell us about egg number, not necessarily egg quality. Quality is something that's more correlated to the woman's age and not something that we can directly test for. The AMH and the antral follicle count, though, give us a good understanding of where our baseline starting point is when we're about to proceed with an egg freezing cycle. They also give us some ability to predict response to treatment and therefore help us to dose the medications during an egg freezing cycle. The next step is understanding how an egg freezing cycle works. I have done several videos on different protocols for IVF and I will link them here. But just to briefly summarize what occurs during a egg freezing cycle. So the first step is what I call phase one. And the point of that is to help try and synchronize the follicles to grow together. And that can be done either with birth control pills, sometimes estrogen. But the ideal goal is we want all the follicles that are there at baseline to grow together at the same pace. So we maximize the number of mature eggs that we get. The next step is the injections. And the duration of the injections can vary in duration, but typically it's somewhere around a time frame of eight to 12 days. And it's typically two to three injections per day. During that time frame, we'll be watching patients closely with blood work and ultrasound every two to three days for a total of four to five visits. We try and make them in and out in the morning, and then we follow up with the patient in the afternoon with the results and the next steps from there. Once the follicles reach the right size, we will then have the patient trigger ovulation. This is another injection that they'll do at home. And then we time the egg retrieval about 35 to 36 hours after the trigger. Then that leads us to the egg retrieval. The egg retrieval is a minor surgical procedure that we do to remove the eggs. This is done with anesthesia, so patients will be in a deep sleep and they won't feel it as we're doing the procedure. The procedure is done with a transvaginal ultrasound and there's a needle guide that snaps into place above the ultrasound probe. And that's how we advance the needle. The needle is essentially resting above the probe until we get to the back of the vaginal wall and it goes through the wall into the ovary. 
Once it's in the follicle, we step on a pedal and this activates a suction mechanism. So we're essentially sucking the fluid out of each follicle. Each follicle, again, in theory, has a microscopic egg that we can't see. So as we're removing the fluid, the egg should come with it. The fluid and the eggs will then travel through the tubing into a test tube, and then we hand the test tube off to the embryologist. The embryologist will look through the fluid under a microscope and identify the eggs. And patients will know before they leave that day how many eggs were retrieved, and then later on that day or the following day, they'll find out how many of those eggs were mature because we typically let the eggs incubate for a few hours before assessing them for egg maturity. So that's a general overview of how an egg freezing cycle works. Now let's talk about what are realistic expectations when going through an egg freezing cycle. When going through an egg freezing cycle, my hope is to help the patient understand what are realistic expectations in terms of number of eggs to expect at the end of the cycle and also number of mature eggs to expect at the end of the cycle. So it starts with our baseline follicle count. That baseline follicle count gives us a starting point in terms of what to expect. The first variable though is that there can be some cycle to cycle variation, plus or minus two to three follicles. So that baseline follicle number could be a little different when patients are ready to start stimulation. So just another um, factor to keep in mind. But let's say a patient has a baseline follicle number of 15. So I'm gonna go through a theoretical example with that baseline number. So again, the first variable is that that number 15 could be a little different when the patient might start a month or two later. It could be, let's say 13, but it could be also 16. So there can be some variation, but let's say for this theoretical example, we're starting with a number of 15. Each step of the IVF process or the egg freezing process is like a hurdle we have to overcome with potential loss of numbers. So for example, we start with 15, but not all 15 may respond to the medications. So let's say theoretically 13 do, and then we get to the egg retrieval. When we get to the egg retrieval, it's not always that the egg will release from the follicle wall, not always that the follicle is normal and has an egg there. Sometimes we encounter cysts that don't have eggs. Also, ovaries can sometimes be challenging to get to during an egg retrieval if it's behind the uterus. And the more challenging the ovary is to get to, the more difficult it may be to get the egg. So if we had 13 that responded to medication, let's say we retrieve 11 eggs, and that would be a reasonable expectation. So of those 11, not all 11 may be mature. Maybe nine eggs are mature. So I want patients to understand that each step of the process, again, is like a hurdle we have to overcome. And I want patients to have that expectation that there's gonna be some loss of numbers as we go through this process. Know that we as your fertility team, your fertility doctor, we are doing our very best to get as many as we can. But again, we just want patients to have a realistic expectation of what number to expect at the end of a cycle. At the end of an egg freezing cycle, patients will meet with their fertility specialist to review what that number of mature eggs was at the end that they were able to retrieve and how does that number correlate to live birth rates. And so I like to review this graph with patients. This is from research studies that have looked at women who have frozen their eggs and it breaks it down based on age. In each individual graph, there is a blue line that reflects probability of live birth for one child. There's a red line that reflects probability of live birth for two children. And there's a green line that reflects probability of live birth for three children. On the x-axis is the number of mature eggs that they were able to retrieve. And on the y-axis is probability of live birth. So from our theoretical example, let's say the patient was 34 years old and we were able to retrieve nine mature eggs. What does that correlate to for live birth rates? So looking at that table, we can see that that correlates to about 50% probability of live birth for one child. And if the goal is two children from this process, about a 20% probability of live birth for two children. In an ideal world, my goal is to get patients as close to 70 to 80% probability of live birth for whatever their goal is. But having said that, that also can vary patient to patient as different patients may have different comfort levels of what they want to set as their goal in terms of what probability they're hoping to get out of the process. Some might be more comfortable with less, some might be more comfortable with a higher probability of live birth. So it also depends a little bit patient to patient.
But let's say also in our theoretical example, let's say the patient was 38 years old and we retrieved nine mature eggs. What does that correlate to? So we'll see from the graph that that's approximately a 35% probability of live birth for one child. And if our goal was two children, approximately an 8% probability of live birth for two children. So you can see there is a decline in these percentages with advancing age. And the reason is, is with advancing age, there's a decline in both egg number, but also egg quality. And so when we see those decline in percentages, it's essentially a reflection of that decline in egg quality that we would anticipate with advancing age. The last point to go over is what is a patient's goals from this process? Are they hoping to achieve one child or two children? Because whatever that goal is will impact the number of mature eggs that we're setting as our overall goal from the process. Now, unfortunately, there isn't a guarantee when it comes to egg freezing. But having said that, sometimes patients undergo the process for one cycle and achieve their goal numbers. Some patients though consider doing more than one cycle and patients that are gonna be at more risk for that are gonna be as the patient gets older and also as that baseline follicle number is lower. And even if the patient can undergo the process once, that is still okay. That one cycle still represents an opportunity to achieve pregnancy and to achieve a baby that would not have been there had the patient not undergone the process. Now, every patient's individual circumstance is different, so I really encourage you to discuss your individual circumstance with your fertility specialist to discuss your age, your ovarian reserve parameters, what realistic expectations would be in terms of mature eggs from one cycle, and what your overall goals are, whether it's one child or two children. So please discuss your individual circumstance with your doctor. That is it for this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, I hope you'll give the video a like. Don't forget to subscribe down below. If you have comments or questions, you can leave them for me there also. Thank you again so much for watching and see you in the next video.